Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5, Differentiating Exponential Functions and Learn of X. Now recall that what I mean by an exponential function is one that's of the form y equals something, some constant to the power of x. So here the variables in the power and compare that to, say, a polynomial term. If I say you had x cubed, that's known as a polynomial term. And there the variable is in the base and the constant's in the power. So you can see that's quite different to, say, for each of the x where it's is in the... And we're going to be differentiating things like this, as well as log graphs like ln of x. And if you haven't done the natural log yet, then I advise that you watch the videos on that first. Now, you hopefully are already familiar with y equals e to x, that is the exponential function. And remember, e is just a special constant. Its value is 2.71 to two decimal places. It's known as Euler's number. And it's just still just a bog standard exponential graph because it's some constant to the power of x. Now, e has a special property that when you differentiate e to the x, it becomes e to the x, so it actually becomes itself. So it's the only expression that when you differentiate it, it becomes just itself. It doesn't change at all. Now we might wonder what happens if this base is something other than e, and that's a bit more complicated. So if you had, say, y equals 2 to the x, if you were to differentiate it, then what happens is that you multiply it by ln of the base, so ln of 2. So more generally, when we have y is equal to some constant to the power of x, we get dy over dx is equal to a to the x, and you times it by ln of the base, and that is a key result. And note, by the way, that if a was e, so we had e to the x, we get e to the x ln e. But if you're familiar with your laws of logs, then you'll know that ln of e is just 1. So e to the x ln e is just the same as e to the x. So this is just a special case of that. And this is the one result you need to remember for the moment. And by the way, if you want a proof of this particular result, I don't cover it in this video, but I do cover it in my slides on my website. So let's use that to differentiate the expressions in 1 and 2. So we already know that when we differentiate e to the x, you get e to the x. Now, when you differentiate e to the 2x in b, now we have to use something called the chain rule. Now we cover the chain rule in another video, but for the moment, all you need to remember is that when you differentiate e to some power, you get the same thing, but you have to times by whatever the power differentiates to. So what does 2x differentiate to? Well, it's two. So I get two e to the 2x. And let's apply that principle for c. If I had e to the x cubed, we use something known as a chain rule again, but you just need to remember that you basically just have the same thing, but you multiply by the power differentiated. So that differentiated is 3x squared. And we tend to write it with this on front of the e to the x cubed. So we get 3x squared e to the x cubed to tidy it up. And what about d? If we had e to the minus x differentiated with respect to x, then we get the same thing, e to the minus x, but we times by whatever the minus x differentiates to, which is minus 1. So we just get minus e to the minus x. And what about 3e e to the x? Well, in general, if you scale an expression, so here we've multiplied e to the x by 3, it would also multiply the gradient function by 3 as well. So if the e to the x differentiates to e to the x, then if we times that by 3, we also times the result by 3. It's the same for integration. If you scale the expression by multiplying it by a constant, we also scale the integral as well. And what about these things here? So 2a... We want to differentiate 2 to the x. Well, we've already seen that one. We just have the same thing, but we multiply it by ln of the base. So we get ln 2. B, 3 to the x differentiated. We would just get 3 to the x, ln 3. Now, this one's a bit harder. What about 2 to the 3x? Well, what happens here is that we, again, multiply by ln of the base. So we have 2 to the 3x, ln 2. 
But just with these ones here, we multiplied by what if the power differentiates to, we do the same here. So we've got to multiply by what if the power differentiates to, which is 3, so we get an extra 3 on the end. What about d? 4 to the 3x differentiated. Again, we just multiply by ln of the base, so ln 4, so 4 to the 3x, ln 4. But we multiply by the power differentiated, so we get that 3. And then finally, e, when we differentiate 3 lots of 2 to the x, that dot just means multiply by, it's not a decimal point. We differentiate the 2 to the x first, so it's 2 to the x ln 2. But because we scaled this expression by 3, we times it by 3, we also scale this thing as by 3 as well, so it would be times by 3. Now for question 3 we've got some natural logs here. Do you remember what a log graph looks like? A log graph just looks like this, it goes through 1, so this would be y equals ln of x. But any log graph would look the same as this. And you just need to know, and I'm not going to prove in this video, but again it's in my slides, the proof is actually very complicated. When you differentiate this, you get 1 over x. Now, this is interesting because before, if you had x to the power of minus 1, which we do here, if you wanted to integrate it, you can't do it in the conventional way of adding 1 to the power and dividing by that power. Because if you added 1 to the power, the power would now be 0. Then you have to divide by 0, which you can't do. So it's interesting that we now do have a method of integrating 1 over x. It actually gives you ln of x. So let's differentiate these things here. 3a, well, we've already seen that when you differentiate ln of x, you get 1 over x is the key result. What about this, ln of 3x? Now, this is very interesting because ln of 3x could be written using laws of logs as ln of 3 plus ln of x. Do you remember from laws of logs, if you have log of a plus log of b, that will give you log of a, b, which is exactly what we've got here. Now, when we differentiate that, ln of 3 is just a constant, and we know that constants differentiate to nothing. So we're just differentiating ln of x now, which is 1 over x. So in summary, if I had y equals ln of kx, so some constant times x, then when I differentiate it, it just still gives me 1 over x, Basically, scaling the x inside the log has no effect on the gradient. What about c? 5 ln x. Now, this time, the 5 is not inside the log. We're just scaling the ln of x by 5. And again, we can use this principle. If we scale the expression, we can scale the result. So if the ln of x differentiates to 1 over x, when we times it by 5, it will be 5 over x. And this last one here, when we differentiate 6 ln 2x, now we know ln of 2x just becomes 1 over x, we ignore the 2, but we're timesing it by 6, so it becomes 6 over x. So that 2 has no effect on the gradient, but the 6 does, it does scale the 1 over x by 6. Now we've finally got this applied question here, this modelling question. They do like modelling in A-level exams, for example. So rabbit population P after t years can be modelled using P equals 1,000 times 2 to the t. Determine after how many years the rate of population increase will reach 20,000 rabbits per year. So the rate of population increase, that's the rate of change of P. So that's dP over dt. So if P is equal to 1,000 times 2 to t, then the rate of change, any rate is always over dt. So it's dP over dt. It's a rate of its over dt. Now we know to differentiate 2 to the t, we just have to times by ln 2. But we scaled it by 1,000, so we still got that 1,000 on the front. And we're asking, when will this rate of change be equal to 20,000? So we want to set this equal to 20,000. And now we just have to solve this equation. So we could divide both sides of the equation by 1,000. So that just gives you 2 to the t ln 2 is equal to 20. Uh, we want to get the t on its own, so... That 2 to t has been multiplied by ln 2, so let's divide by ln 2 to get it out of the way. 20 over ln 2. 
Now, how do we get rid of that two to the power of on front of the T? Well, we log base two both sides because the inverse of two to the power of is log base two, so that will get rid of it. So that left-hand side, we've got rid of the two to the power of by logging it, we get T, and then we just have to do log base two of that whole thing there. And then obviously we're gonna to have to plug this into a calculator and that gives us 4.85 years. There we go, so after 4.85 years, the rate of rabbit growth will be 20,000 rabbits per year.